Hello everyone, welcome to Jay's Creative, Get Creative with Jay's Creative, my live show. And I'm really excited to have my next guest for February. This is Robert Blackledge, Executive Director of Domi Station, well, Domi Education. Uh, that is the parent brand. Um, and I'm really happy to have you on today, Robert. Thank you for hopping on. Marvel, thank you for having me. Especially with your busy schedule. It's been crazy, right? Yeah, we're doing a lot at Domi. It's really incredible. I'm really excited for all that we have coming. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, I actually have been a co-working member from the beginning since Domi started about six, seven years ago, um, right around the time I started JH Creative. So I'm really thankful for the Domi community for including me um, from the beginning with the original founder, Micah Wyden, and I've kind of watched Domi evolve uh, in time and, and mature in time. And so now Robert is here to take Domi to the next level. And, um, and also briefly, uh, since I didn't give his bio, <laughs> he's been involved with so many things, including uh, mentoring um, entrepreneurs in the last half, like you say, half a decade, pretty much. Um, and he's also done all kinds of things. He's a veteran. He's traveled all over the world. He's so he's well um, experienced in being a leader and doing so much. So I just wanted to get him on the show and talk about like what brought him to Domi and to Tallahassee and talk about his story. So go ahead and, and just introduce yourself a little bit more because I know I, I only scratched the surface. Wonderful, absolutely, Julia. As mentioned, my name is Robert Plackledge. I'm the executive director at Domi Station and the chair for Tally Tech Alliance. So with that in mind, for me, it's been actually a, over a decade of traveling experiences, being in the military. I even have about 10 years of experience in the retail industry, over half of which was management. So for me, I, I don't know. <clears throat> really incredible 2015. I had gotten an undergraduate degree, a graduate degree, so I graduated with an MBA. I also started three companies and, and bought two. And so that was, uh, while I had been an entrepreneur in the past and done some things as a child, uh, this was really my forte into uh, being a kind of full-time entrepreneur and looking to bring in revenue from that. Uh, unfortunately, in 2016, I ended up losing the companies that we had bought there were two blimpies. We were doing half a million dollars of revenue, and I was in charge of helping facilitate the marketing for the region. So it was a lot going on, but I ended up having a, a bad partnership, and the partner took all the cash in the bank and paid off business debt. So not necessarily something illegal or nefarious, but uh, when you don't have cash flow for a company, it, it, you don't have any way to pay your bills, and that led to a, an actually pretty. Uh, significant depressive episode for me uh, losing something that you put your heart and soul into it drives you uh, really sets you uh, in a, a unique mindset it's kind of i wouldn't say it's exactly like losing a child but very similar emotion something that you brought into the world that you created is, is taken away from you and so for me i went on a, a walkabout I think there's real value in taking time out of your day-to-day -day life and being with yourself and thinking through what you're feeling and what your emotions are so you can help set up yourself for success. But for me, I was standing in my driveway uh, completely depressed and not knowing what to do, but having this deep desire to get away. And so I was staring at this Fiat 500, nice little red car, and I pulled the seats out of it, put a bed, a dresser, and some fans, 
and I hit the road. I was like, I'm just going to drive and keep driving until I find where I'm looking for. And I ended up going all the way up to Nova Scotia. So this is the very tippy top of the North American continent, as far as you can go, this little uh, point called Money Point. And if you haven't driven in Canada, the roads are black asphalt, eight lanes, trees as high as the sky, and mountain ranges as far as you can see. I'm driving all the way until the road turns to dirt and stops at the base of a mountain. Now, in my mind, I'm like, I came all this way. I'm still looking for whatever it is I'm here to find, and this mountain's not going to stop me. So I grab a bag out of my car, and I climb up and over a mountain through trails that are overgrown, kind of like the Secret Garden, and came out finally to the other side on the coastline. And there, there was runes spread across the coast. The actual coastline was made out of black marble, and it was overcast. Oh my God, I just traveled weeks to get here, and I feel no different. The, the world at least looks how I feel, but is not um, helping me find what I'm looking for. So I turn around, and I head back up and over the mountain. And as I was coming over the top of the other side, the sun was setting. The ocean was on fire, a lit orange. The mountain ranges were shining brightly. And I, I think there's something magical that happens when you are in awe. You kind of open up yourself to your own thoughts. And I had this moment of realization that everything I had done in my life to that point, for the most part, was driven and focused on obtaining monetary growth for myself. So money, right? And with that, you can lose it all in an instant just like that, be gone. So I thought about what my passions were, what really drove me, why I existed in this world. And for me, I found that I was truly passionate or driven around education and entrepreneurship, because I believe that education empowers you and entrepreneur mindset sets you free. So from that point, I really had this pivotal shift where I was still wanting to create change in the world and make an impact, but it was focused on one thing. How can I create educational experiences that empower people to pursue what their goals are and be driven to achieve that? I still went on to have a few more companies at that point. To date, I've had 10. The last one was using machine learning to align university curriculum to employer needs in real time. So how can we close that skill gap, really make sure people are graduating with the skills they need to be uh, effective in the industry they want to be effective? Um, we were raising capital for that. I ended up having an investor move my family from Tampa to West Palm Beach, and then they pulled the investment on us. At the same time, my two wonderful children were born, so I have boy-girl twins, and it was, uh, continued down that rat race of trying to find capital to pay for the enterprise build out of the product that we were, were putting into the market or uh, be a dad and I chose to be a father. So for several months, I was just a dad at home, which was a really incredible experience for me. And when we were looking at what we wanted to do to go back into the job market or start another company, I really wanted something with a little bit of more security. And for the past a little over half a decade now, I had voluntarily been helping put on large events like large hackathons and startup weekends. So things like um, Office Depot's hackathon or IEEE's or Code for Tampa Bay or, and, or Startup Bus. If you haven't heard of Startup Bus, that's three days on a bus. You go from pitching an idea, forming a team, putting a product in market, so building and selling the product all while there are eight or nine other routes traveling around the country, all to end up in a destination city. So these kinds of events were really powerful. So you can see uh, Startup Grind was one of the organizations that I was able to bring at my role in Catapult Lakeland. So when I was looking for something to do, I wanted to really have a career doing these events, putting these on, and was able to um, find a role at a 40,000 square foot commercial kitchen, maker space and incubator in downtown Lakeland. So we moved our family to Lakeland and it was a, a lot of fun. I had a blast helping these entrepreneurs grow. Uh, at this point I had helped and support and mentored thousands of entrepreneurs and their companies. 
was able to bring a lot of resources to that community. I kind of think of a, of a mindset of nationally connected, locally focused. And while I was there, uh, the pandemic hit. And so like most companies, they had to cut costs and they didn't renew my contract. But I had been aware of Domi Station, uh, been aware of what was going on here and really wanted to take what I had learned and the, the resources I had built up at Catapult and have an impact in the local ecosystem. So in August, not, not this past August, but the previous August, I came on board virtually from Lakeland, building out the entrepreneurial education at Domi Station. And we were faced with a really unique challenge. This is right at the beginning of the pandemic. Domi had mostly been doing their content online with some early fortes into some virtual experiences or hybrid experiences, but it really wasn't a well-refined process. And so I was able to take that early work uh, that was well done and amplify it, build it out into a very robust six month entrepreneurial program with weekly classes, monthly masterminds, and now an over a thousand um, mentor network. So over a thousand mentors that all of our entrepreneurs in our program are readily accessible to. And so from there, uh, in April, I moved up and took over as the executive director at Domi Station when Bill Lixon moved over to an Innovation Park. So uh, there was an opportunity for him to help drive what's going on over there, and I stepped up to run Domi Station. And since then, we're really positioning ourselves to, to have a really incredible impact on a national level. With that virtual program, we've been able to provide these resources across the state and country to entrepreneurs no matter where they are, but at the same time, really having a local focus on the Tallahassee community, bringing partnerships, resources, educational content, even discounted primary healthcare to the entrepreneurs that participate in the program. And it's really built on the lessons that I've learned as an entrepreneur, lessons that other entrepreneurs have learned growing their companies so that as individuals get started on their entrepreneurship journey or in the midst of it, they have a community of resources, education, other entrepreneurs that they can lean on and get guidance and resources from. Wow, <clears throat> so much to unpack there. <laughs> no, yeah, that's that, and that's what I loved about Domi and still do, you know, just how much support Domi provides and, and the team. Um, all the teams from the beginning um, have been so supportive to entrepreneurs like myself uh, from early stage, starting brand spanking new, and to even now with Domi Masters, a more mature audience of, or a mature uh, group of entrepreneurs. So, so you have Gear Up, right? Maybe you could talk a little bit about what you're doing now. So there's Gear Up, Ascend, Domi Masters, and, and all the events that you throw on. Yeah, so I'll give a little bit of an overview of our programs. Gear Up is really that foundation. Like we say, we're gearing you up to be an entrepreneur, we're giving you all of the overview of the things you don't know that you need to know so that you have a solid ground to build a business or pursue your venture or even be an effective employee entrepreneur in a local business. And so that's a great foundational program that we offer at Domi. I say this kind of the next tier, when you leave the core programming, you don't really need those weekly classes of content, but you still want access to the mentor network, the community, and maybe there's some refresher content there that you want to engage. And so those are kind of the, the core pieces of what Domi is offering. Now, more recently, we've launched Domi Masters. We'll have our second one on February 25th, which is a really powerful program. Uh, I think in this town, we don't have anything similar to it. There's a few um, BNIs or the Chamber or JMI is accessible to more advanced companies that have accelerated. But we, we saw this real gap between kind of where our companies were leaving Domi's core programming and then entering the market but still not able to gain access to these resources. So we were um, lucky enough to actually partner with Dave Loveless, who was the chair of Vistage for 15 years, has helped companies go from negative revenue to millions of revenue, sell. I mean, he's a wealth of knowledge and experience for it. The, the core value of Domi Masters is not just the guidance from uh, Dave, but, but it really is the other entrepreneurs in there. 
right? When you're an entrepreneur or your business owner, it can be a very lonely experience. Your friends, your family aren't going to know or feel or have the weight of making sure payroll gets across the line before the next week. Um, and the, the experiences that brings with it. So this is the group of entrepreneurs that have a few employees and have generated revenue that can come together monthly and really get support of each other to lean on. And the beauty of all these programs is really that you sometimes in some cases, especially with Vistage, like businesses have to make a certain amount of revenue and you have to have a certain size team. A lot of these programs make it really easy for people to get acclimated, learn a lot of mistakes to avoid um, in the beginning. You know, and, and back in the day, you started a business, you lost a ton of money, and that's how you learned, <laughs> right? Now there's so much education online, and then there's programs that Joby provides that um, helps people avoid those kinds of mistakes. Um, and I'm really uh, grateful to be a part of Joby Masters this year. Um, because I, I do need to recover from 2020 and COVID, all things COVID. So, um, and you mentioned a little bit, uh, I wanted to ask you more too about how you went through that kind of a valley or experience of depression of, uh, I guess, from that decision of, of partnering with someone that you didn't realize that would go sour. Um, tell me a little bit more about that. Would you say that's a very common experience for entrepreneurs that are kind of starting new I, I i go through waves of depression for sure <laughs> yeah i think the emotional turmoil of all the different things that come with being a business owner weigh significantly on anyone um and you know for me some of the key things i've learned is you know if you're going to have a business partner have an operating agreement clearly outline what it means to leave the organization if you no longer want to participate in it so there's some really simple things that I could have had in place that would have prevented that whole uh, experience from happening. But when you're when you're first getting started, especially even you know this was five six years ago, a lot of these programs were just getting started. So it really was before there was a lot of support for entrepreneurs and that guidance of how you avoid some of these common mistakes. And then from there, the other part is you see a lot of people build something without getting the customer first, right? It, you can sell products before you actually have a product to sell. Uh, I mean, you wanna be careful about collecting money, but you can get people to sign up and Dropbox is a great example of this. Their first foray into an example of what people are actually putting out into the world was a video explaining their product. Hey. It's hard to share files. What if there was this one centralized location where you could put your stuff and somebody else could get access to it? Sign up today to get it on the pre-wait list. And they had thousands of people sign up overnight and they used that to get the funding to build the product compared to hundreds of thousands of dollars being spent on something with zero customers wanting the product. So those are some really common ones. But for me, I think the the evolution, right, of the mindset of how do we ex grow and expand as a person. Wisdom comes from experience and experience always has a cost. But that cost is is what you make of it. And knowing what you're willing to risk is a, is a big part of that. And I want to give a shout out to Grant. And I see that he joined. I, th I think, did you see Robert? He, he was like giving us a little shout out. Thanks for hopping on. And I love how he hops on the show sometimes. <laughs> um, Grant has been a member with the Domi SN program, I believe. Um, I, I enjoy uh, his tidbits once in a while too. Like when I hop on the mastermind sessions, those have been invaluable. Um, having that peer-to-peer -peer group, having that support, I, I feel like that's why I continue to um, be there. I, I Domi, Domi provides a lot more than just co-working space um, and also the programs that they offer, but there's that mutual, um, just just that 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 camaraderie, you know, that, that you just get it when you're with other entrepreneurs that deal with a lot of the same issues where your family doubts you or people in your circles just don't get why you're willing to take that risk and not make money right away. <laughs> I mean, I, I know for me, like I have my personal struggles. And so it's really nice to be able to 
to just commiserate with other fellow entrepreneurs and, and have the mentors like we have with Robert. So, um, and what, what else would you say, uh, you know, just go ahead and continue on like and build so off. I, of, like... I think one thing that really comes to mind, if anyone has seen Thor Ragnarok, right? The theme of the whole movie is that Asgard is not a place, it's a people. And I really do feel that with Domi. Yes, we have a physical location, but Domi is not the place. It's the people that come together to support each other, to be increase the likelihood of success, to share resources, to give guidance. I think that is the message of Domi, is that we're, we're not just a place. We are a people who of, of entrepreneurs in this community and beyond that are helping each other work together to be successful in all that we do. And that collaboration is powerful because going to have, having someone that you can share your experiences as a business owner who understands and gets it and probably has experienced it too, helps you to have that shoulder to lean on, helps someone to give you guidance when you're going through it, but also it helps with your mental well-being because it can be very lonely as an entrepreneur and knowing that you're not alone in this and that there is a community of support that you can lean on is massive and has paid out in droves for Domi Station as far as the impact impact that we've been able to make in the community. Um, we've been able to provide scholarships to our program. In fact, in January, we gave 22 full scholarships to six months of entrepreneur support or gear up program and allow those entrepreneurs to come in, get those resources, most of which are underserved communities, minorities, um, middle-aged individuals that are looking for that next step in their career, their journey, their life and we're able to connect them to a massive amount of resources and tools and connect them through this guidance that we're able to provide there's uh, paid programming at Domi which we've talked about the gear up and ascend and the uh, Domi masters but there's also a lot that we do in the community that's completely free we have virtual uh, workshops with our partners that HubSpot and Google are sharing top of class content about what it is and to do sales and marketing and put your your business out there on Google and get recognized and find, be found in those searches and many, many more. Those partnerships are an incredible resource for the Tallahassee community and would only have happened it only happens because of the economic impact that we're able to create. Last year, we did $74 million of economic impact. That's $211 for every dollar that came in the door to Domi. And we've been able to provide over 100000 of direct discounted price of services to entrepreneurs, whether that's we're about 50% under market rate for our co-working, and we're giving away free access to our entrepreneur programming, hundreds of uh, well, thousands of dollars, a little over a hundred thousand dollars in total. So that is impactful on a much grander scale. It's very much, I think, uh, the difference between a million dollars today and a dime every day that doubles, right? Which would you rather have? Domi is the dime or penny that doubles every day because we're doing things that aren't just impactful, but that are impactful and create ripples throughout the community. We're not just helping an entrepreneur get their feeding, we're helping the entrepreneur get their feeding so they can hire a team which creates jobs and then those people can go help support their families. So it really is incredible to be a part of that, to be in the center of that early stage, kind of sowing the seeds and tilling the farm work that is necessary in a lot of municipalities. And I think what's powerful about where Domi's at now is we've vetted a model that can really be plugged and played into any municipality. And we're starting to have those conversations across the country and, and even internationally into Canada about what it would take to bring Domi's resources and focus them in other municipalities, which is just amazing. We are uh, the final steps of 
being able to transfer our program into TCC for college credits. That's 12 college credits that you get to bring into a program at, at community college, which is transferable to the Florida Southern, or, or, or sorry, FSU, Florida State University. And then we're also talking to Florida Southern about how we can stand that up and provide participation for their students uh, as a class that they can take. So these, these steps are um, mold breaking. I think is the term I'm kind of using more and more, is that Domi really does the things that break the mold. Uh, we can't do this. Oh, heck yeah, we can. We can absolutely do this, and we can do this better than anyone else. So let's go out there, let's make an impact, let's change people's lives so that they don't have to wake up in the morning wondering where their next meal is coming from. They know how to get it. They know, I, I mean, I love the saying, don't give people fish, teach them how to fish. That's what Domi does every day. And that's very powerful and and you've had a lot of success domi the team has have had a lot of success with several businesses that have started there i mean even before these programs were laid out like you had coworkers like divvy up and some people are who are either starting F at fsc have never heard of divvy up so i'm just gonna say that they're, they're the sock company they grew from starting with just some students, um, and actually they also are going to be some potential guests for this year. They, they showed interest. Um, so I know Spencer, Jason, and Mitch, they, they started at FSU with this idea of you kind of very similar to the Tom concept. You buy a pair of socks and then they donate the pair to homeless community. And, um, and it's grown tremendously and making a huge impact here at Tallahassee. And, and there's other co-working members too that I'd love to feature on the show and, and Domi also are reaching and reconnecting with these um, co-working members uh, to see how they could be engaged and continue to support Domi as well. Uh, and speaking of which, um, I haven't really made an, an official announcement or made it a big announcement. Um, on my socials yet, but I might as well um, mention it here. I ended up deciding to join, Robert convinced me to join the Domi team. I'm helping them part-time on multiple roles and I'm really happy to be involved at this level with the Domi team because I've, I've been an unofficial ambassador anyway, so <laughs> I might as well be part of the team. Um, and there's a lot of exciting things happening this year. Robert's like light speed. He operates on light speed. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and I'm that person on slow, the team like me down. I was in a call the other day and I'm like, we can do this and we can do this and we can go here and we can do that. And they're like, they're like, whoa, 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 come on. We're like, slow down, Robert. These are all great things, but this is like the three year plan. I'm like, okay, okay, it's fine. <laughs> we can do this in three years. I think you always overestimate what you can do in a year and you uh, underestimate what you can do in five. And I'm like, let's just go straight to five years, let's get it done and start pushing for it. I'm like, shoot for the moon and we'll land up there. <laughs> stars kind of stuff yeah i know i know so so several events are happening this year um we've got uh, even the new thing this year is code talks we've got it pretty much lined up for the whole entire year we have a monthly uh pretty much it's a talk about code coding anything related to coding right um yeah so it's it's kind of an agnostic more technical talk on software development broad spectrum on the different types of, of software. We're, we're keeping it pretty uh, agnostic, but if you'd like to learn about code, last month we were talking about JavaScript and how to get started in that language if that was something you were interested in. Uh, today's a really interesting conversation as well. So if you wanna come by Domi at six o'clock, we'll be having that right here. We also live stream it online. So our goal is to provide as much as we can to the community, through these free resources and programs. Every first Friday of the month from uh, five to seven, you can come have a beer and some free food at Domi. You're more than welcome to join us. That's free and open to the public. We're working on a pitch event on the April 28th that uh, to be decided on the location, but there we have already secured 25,000 in cash and in-kind prizes for the entrepreneurs. And we're in early talks with WeFunder that may very well be able to allow you to invest in these companies that are pitching, which is massive. We're talking about actually putting your money in support of local businesses on a large scale to these early stage and, and 
to be honest, some that are a little bit beyond early stage, they've actually got sales, they're generating revenue, they have customers. So there's some really impressive things happening in the community. And the goal of that is to really expose the community to that and get the community support to support those entrepreneurs. We'll have more on that in early March, so you'll start seeing that. That really kicks off the whole, uh, it's, it's about a month of content around pitching and presenting. In March, we're doing an event with FAMU, that's a pitch night for FAMU students, so get everybody in the pitching mindset. We're going to have an intro to crowdsourcing platforms with WeFunder in early April. I mean, don't hold me to all this stuff because it's not actually in ink yet, but we'll be doing training on presentation and pitching all month. That's the the month uh, we present on that in our gear up program so we'll be making a lot of that public to the community and then we'll have that pitch event on the 28th we're also planning a nft day on the 30th of april and we're actually hopefully we'll be bringing up grant posner who has about a hundred thousand dollars of scanning equipment that can get you down to the three microns so this is a future proofing model model of yourself and We'll hope to convert some of those into NFT collections and give you an asset that you can use in the metaverse and then have some really incredible guest speakers all day on the 30th to come and talk about what this NFT thing is, a little bit on what blockchain is, really expose the community to what we can do, and what the potential is. Uh, and next week, we're going to Synapse Conference, so that'll be a lot of fun. The team's headed down there. I'm hoping to get a little bit of time with Grant to get scanned in and that way we can have an example of what we'll be trying to do on the 30th so there's a lot and that's just that's between now and in may <laughs> um, we've got you're not going to kill the team in the process i don't i just <laughs> i'm i'm trying not to I'm, I'm trying not to no no and and we'll have a nice long you know a summer to kind of recoup and and just prepare for startup week which is also another big one for those of you who um, have not heard, and we actually have a video up too, um, you can see it on their socials, but this is like me, Robert um, uh, was kind enough to actually give me this opportunity to interview uh, these awesome panelists. And they a lot of them are pretty much either president or directors for all the chambers. Um, I know one of the Tallahassee chamber, they couldn't be there in person, but they were all invited. And to me, that was like a, a historical moment uh, Robert makes things happen here that hasn't been done before. So it's it's really exciting to be a part of it and to watch. So for those of you who don't follow Domi yet and Robert, you can find him, well, find Domi, obviously, on, on, on their socials, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, they stream everything on Facebook and YouTube. You can sign up for the newsletter on their website. Um, and also, Robert has a podcast. I believe uh, we have it up here in the comments, um, if it isn't already. But it, you can find his info on rep, robertblackledge.com. And his your podcast is called, it has to do with Startup Santa. Startup Santa Show. <laughs> it's your and second earned, season, right? I earned that nickname kind of. So you, you do a, you have a few businesses and you kind of have some experiences and you get wisdom from that. And I, I would go around and share these little nuggets of wisdom talking to these entrepreneurs. And it kind of caught on that Robert was this, this startup Santa walking around giving these presents of startup wisdom. Uh, and that, that's kind of where that came from. And I, I just kind of kept it going. When, you, when people uh, tell you it multiple times, you're kind of like, well, I guess this is a thing that might as well own it. And uh, I, my beard used to be much longer when I was a tech founder. You know, I had the obligatory, like, massive beard, beard and, you know, your little Santa hat, and you were good to go. Um, startup Santa. So you didn't give yourself that nickname. Somebody no. named you. Like, no, I didn't give it to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I've never been much for, like, nicknames. Um, but when, when people start calling you something, and, you know, it wasn't, like, derogatory. It was, uh, like, I felt very um, blessed to be thought in that light and so I, I was like okay I can own this this is cool yeah and then you, you forgot to mention Julia that we, what? we were able to bring Russell Branson and on the the video screen for startup week oh 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 you mean Richard Branson Richard Branson yes <laughs> yes I mean yeah no for sure and I because I don't have the whole 
you know, I, I obviously don't have the whole um, video capture of all of that. But yes, you, you were able to bring him up on the stream there. Um, you've been featured on the Global Entrepreneurship uh, Network website network. Yes, you, your article. You've been featured on multiple platforms. We're actually probably going to get you on the news more so this year. That's one of our goals. Yeah, I've got, I've got like global recognition and yeah, you know. Look, I'm like humble. Like we're doing cool stuff. I'm just like I just love doing what we're doing. It makes a difference in people's lives, and every once in a while we get some cool recognition for it. Um, I get to go and have some cool talks and conversations with people. And some of that gets picked up on a national and international stage. Yeah, and that's one of the best things too that Domi does is you bring a lot of the entrepreneurs to light, give them a lot of free PR, um, if they're part of the program, obviously, and even just being part of the Domi community, um, just all about entrepreneurship and supporting businesses to start and grow. So yeah, I mean, uh, here's the long and short of it. Everybody works for a company that was started by a founder. Everyone, every business, every nonprofit, somebody had to start that or a group of people had to start that. And if you go out and do that on your own, you have an 80 plus percent chance of failing. If you go through a program like Domi where it connects you to a community, you have a 20 percent chance of failure. So it drops dramatically just by being close to those resources, being exposed to them, being able to lean on other entrepreneurs and those that have gone before you and subject matter experts. And that's the power of it is we have a higher rate of success when an entrepreneur is brought into the fold, if you will, uh, than if they were just to go out and do it on their own. And Domi has proven that that model has worked for years, even before the program. And just having a place for entrepreneurs to gather and lean on each other, that's where Divi Up and Chop Harbor and uh, Vail Foods, like there's so many to name, h -Win, those came out of just having a space for it and the community coming together around that. Now we have a very robust program that is built around a defined uh, set of needs that we typically see entrepreneurs having and uh, it's scalable, it's impactful and we're, we're looking to plug it into other places. I love that metric, it's true. Like a lot of businesses pretty much close down like 50% that start, they close down within that first year. It's not the easiest road to take. So I feel like Domi makes it easier and um, having Robert as a new executive director uh, to take Domi on and then further. And he is not moving, by the way, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we, we have also. Awesome... We have two young kids. Uh, we he just moved kids, here. We moved to West Palm and then we moved to Lakeland and then we moved here. And I was like, we're done. It's never not. You know how much stuff you get when you, if you're a parent, you understand. Like it literally is like th a third of your stuff is just kids stuff that has to come with you. And we, yeah. Before the kids, it was easy. We could fit stuff in a few cars or a U-Haul on. Like now I'm like two U-Hauls and, and a, yeah, no, we're done. We've got, we've got a <laughs> nice house with a pool and, and some land and uh, we're in a good school district, which is a huge plus for us. And so we're here for the long haul. Yeah. At least until so they move out here. and then we'll yeah. I'll retire and go and sit on a beach somewhere. You'll be around for a good amount of time. Let's just say that. We won't hold you to it. Um, Tallahassee is like, it's funny because there's a lot of people who didn't end up planning living here, ended up staying here after graduating from FSU and and even FAMU. And, and so it's one of those communities. It's a very transient community. Everybody travels a lot. But I feel like it's at that point now where it's just going to start blowing up even more. Um, I'm not sure how much the community will allow that to happen. Not that I want it to become the next San Francisco or anything. I'm not, I'm from San Francisco, so I know where that path goes. <laughs> I mean, the rub is for the first time ever, Tallahassee is competing on a national level for payroll price or income and salaries. And so you don't have to leave and you can still get near New York payroll. So that, I think adds a little bit level of extra stress for employers because they're looking for talent. They're competing on a, on a much larger scale now. But at the same time, it means that these students that come here for some of the best education in the world don't necessarily have to leave the community to still be able to contribute to it. And those that do, 
I know personally of a few who have left, gone back home, but still work for local companies. So the, the talent and the resources that we foster at Domi, it's not just the entrepreneurs. Most of our interns that we have go on to Fortune 500 companies, really have <clears throat> an incredible impact on the broader community. Yes, I mean, there's definitely, I, I remember several, like one went to work at Apple. Um, I know several have started their own businesses that did well. And so um, Domi provides that level of development as well for the team members. And not that we're going to try to, y'all are onboarding like a whole nother 10 this year. <laughs> Every semester we onboard somewhere around 10 to 14 students. So we, I mean, quite a, we get a, significant amount of those in the community to come and be a part of what we're doing. And that's be that's part of being a college town too. Um, so, but the space guys, if for those of you who work for uh, big companies, there's quite a few that have also co-worked at Domi, like that work for Salesforce, uh, big tech companies also co-working out of uh, Domi. So that that's, that's pretty neat. And, it, and I feel like that's a, it's a great hub to be around that kind of talent. Well, if you go ahead, Robert, do you want to oh, say any yeah, last party say, words? It's, it's feel powerful like to be in a community, right? And that's the co-working loves that too. There's a, you know, a lot of people are focused. They're going to be working, but at lunchtime, there's at least a few people gather around the table, having a conversation. And so if you are remote and you miss a little bit of that office, uh, kind of feel, Domi offers that. And it's a much more diverse group of individuals that you get to have those conversations with because it's not just your coworkers, it's coworkers from other locations and, and entrepreneurs and uh, experts that provide for a very diverse conversation. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Robert, for taking your time to interview and, and hop on my little show. Um, I hope for those of you who are watching, you can like and share and comment. Um, my team will follow up. If you have any questions, feel free to find Robert here. Let me go pull up my screen here. Just Robert. He has a website that has all his contact information, robertblackledge.com. And then you can also sign up at Domi Station for all things Domi. Uh, we recently revamped the newsletter. It really pretty much ties into everything that's related to the business community and entrepreneurs and, and Domi alumni as well. Uh, so, and of course, our, our socials. So, hey, hey, our newsletter is so good. People are starting to copy the format. So, you, yes. know, you know you're doing hot stuff when people are <laughs> copying what you're doing. It's the greatest awesome. form of flattery. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks again. I'm going to end with this. For those of you who haven't done so already, follow me on my socials. Check out my website. I appreciate you guys. I will go ahead and end the broadcast.